Okay, so building our first JavaFX application for Raspberry Pi. What do you need and how it goes? You go to NetBeans and you select the wizard. And I, I prefer to use in the FXML applications because it's easier to draw on uh, the scene builder. So you just open NetBeans, select JavaFX category, and then a JavaFX FXML application. That, that will give you a sample code with a sample FXML. The code looks like this. An extends application with a start method and a stage object that loads the FXML file. And if you want to have an idea how it's going to work on Raspberry Pi, you can just add the set full screen too for the desktop, for your desktop or laptop. And this will launch your application. Away the full screen mode on your laptop, just press ask and it will bring you a window, a regular window, not full screen. JavaFX is really easy to code. Um, most of the things you're going to do is like define properties with these classes, not using the, pri the primitives of Java. You're going to use, preferably, the, for example, the simple double property of JavaFX. Why are you going to do that? Because you want to tie this value, this object, to a um, UI component to show what's inside in this variable here, okay? And why is this interesting? Because you have bindings. When you use the binding API of JavaFX, you can actually connect a property of a Java object to a component, a visual component on JavaFX. So whenever this property changes, the value changes, the component automatically loads the new value. So you don't need to keep changing the value of your visual component. You just change the data. And you can use unidirectional binding or bidirectional binding, which means if it's bidirectional, let's say you change the data in the component, and then the property of your Java object is updated. It's bidirectional. Here's an example. So let's say you, have, you want to read the humidity information from your Raspberry Pi, and you have a component on your interface, a label, humidity label. The add FXML annotation is what connects this object to the element configured in your FXML file. And then you code a monitor that will keep continually connecting to the REST service and reading the data from the Raspberry Pi. From there, you can get the property from your humidity label and bind to the property of your monitor. So your humidity monitor will keep updating a thread, will keep updating the value in this value property on that object. And with the bind, it will automatically update the UI for you. You don't actually need to code that kind of thing. You just bind the two properties, okay? You can play a little bit with bindings. You can uh, play with calculations. Let's say you want to do some math on conversion between temperature and Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can do just automatically binding between those objects. Let's say I want to add, multiply, and you can have an object that represents something. For example, I have a an object that represents the calculation of something. And then you have the binding between three variables that represents a value for you. So let's say I want to have a Fahrenheit property and a Celsius property. So you have all that automatically for you. You don't have to keep, you don't have to keep calculating manually. Finally, to use JavaFX on Raspberry Pi, you're going to need, of course, connect to the Raspberry Pi and the Things API Gateway, which is REST services. And here's the cool thing. Java E7 came out, and we have a new API called JAXRS 2.0 Client API. So you don't actually need to code the HTTP URL connection, input stream, those crazy things, you know. Just, you can just use a simple API. You can go to jersey.java.net and download if you want, but I have put a zip on this website that comes with the necessary libraries from the last version of Jersey. So you can just download from there and put in your JavaFX lib directory. Okay? 
So how does the JoxRS client API works? Basically, from the client builder, you create a new client. From that client, with that client at hand, you also need an endpoint. So what I like to do, usually building these kind of things, is like give you give the template. So this is the URL template, HTTP, the host, the port, and slash things, which is the things gateway API. And then I get the system property. So I can change this if I want by giving commands, minus D, things host, and give a new IP address. But I can actually hard code something if I just not feeling good with parameters, okay? With those values, I can now put that on a map and use the URI builder, giving the URI template, building the thing server URI, and building from the map with the parameters, host, host and port, and that gives me a client, thing server URI client, okay? All right, we have a client. So how do you get the humidity, for example? We just tell, hey, thanks, server URI, go to the path, slash humidity, create a request, and call the get HTTP command, and convert whatever you get to a string object. This string is the humidity information from the Raspberry Pi that was collected from the Arduino board. Okay, so it's pretty much easy to connect to the REST services using the new JOXRS client API. Uh, one important hinge to dealing with threads in JavaFX. So you want your application to keep reading data from your monitors, your sensors. But if you have been working or had worked with UI development, you know that the UI is updated in a thread. And if you want to do background work, you have to create new threads for that. And if you want to update the UI, you have to schedule the UI update task the job in a queue. So then it gets updated in the same thread. That thing, that concept has been since Java Swing came out. For JavaFX, the same idea. We create a timer task. In the run method, we read the data from the client API, which is the things, humidity path, create a request, get, gives me the val, I convert to float, and then I create a renable and send that to platform dot run later. So this will schedule the UI update process to be run by the thread UI, the UI thread. Okay, so you don't have a hang in your UI. Back to the bindings. So, look at here. So this is a one class, and this class is updating a property in this object, in this monitor object, setting the float value of humidity. This value here is this value property. So what, what I'm saying is the humidity monitor is updating one property of the humidity monitor service. And the humidity label is binded to the humidity monitor property. So I don't actually have, I don't know where this value is being showed up in the UI. I just, I'm just, I'm just offering the data from the mo humidity monitor service. And then if you want to connect that with a label, with a chart, whatever you want, you can just use this idea. Finally, when you have your timer task, you just create a timer, give it a daemon uh, boolean value. So if you kill the application, it doesn't keep running the thread. And you start your service, you schedule, beginning at zero delay and a timely delay. So it, you can run, for example, the humidity service for at each five seconds. So uh, let me show you what uh, the automation effects application. So this is the automation effects application. So each, each component here is connected through to a service. And this service offers property, JavaFX properties. And I just bind the components to those properties. And if the data is updated, the UI is automatically updated. 
The chart here is really easy to do. You can look at the source code of this application if you want an idea. All the components are connected using REST API, using the JAX client API.